UFC, the world leader in MMA. Experience it on Fox Sports 1. Nashville, Tennessee, the home of country music, is the landing pad for another edition of Fox Sports 1 UFC Fight Night. And there is tomorrow night's main event. Former title challenger Glover Teixeira brings his heavy hands and Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt into the volunteer state against local Ovin St. Fru, who played football for the University of Tennessee just three hours east in Knoxville. And in the co-main event, Black Zillion Michael Johnson brings a four-fight win streak to the octagon, but his opponent, King's MMA's Benil Dariush, has also got a four-fight run of his own. Guys, take it away. The UFC weigh-in show starts right now. Yeah! All right, as you see, we got some help from some of America's finest from the U.S. Navy stopping by the studio today from all of us here at Fox. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Well, Karen Bryan here with a pair of light heavyweight tough guys, the reigning, Take notice. defending, <laughs> Take notice. 205 Take pound notice, champion, boy. Daniel Take Cormier. Notice. Take notice. And the man who knows how that feels, though, my friends. He's trying to get it back, Mr. Rashad Evans. I don't like the way that sounds know, when I'm, I'm sitting sorry, next to him. Sugar. I'm sorry, <laughs> Sugar. Heidi Andro will be along as well. And uh, guys, tomorrow night, we've got a really solid main event. Ovin Singh Pru is basically coming up for his toughest test to date, taking on Glover to show. Yeah, it's going to be a tough fight, but at a point in your career, you have to sink or swim. For Ovin St. Pru, this is the time. Does he get past the guy in Glover to share that's fought for the belt, that's been in the cage with John Jones, a guy that's competed at a high level and beat some very good fighters in his career? If Ovin can get the job done tomorrow night, no longer is he a prospect. He is now a legitimate contender to the light heavyweight championship. Well, there's a lot of things that excites me about O'Vance, and mainly because of the fact that he's gotten better in areas where he struggled at his wrestling. Getting up from the bottom is areas he struggled at, and it shows that he's improving, and he's an exciting guy to see because he's one of those guys that has so much athletic ability, so much natural skill. It's scary to see what he can do, and especially for you. It well, not me. It's not, <laughs> hey, not me, but listen. Ovin St. Pru has to prove tomorrow night that he can beat a well-rounded fighter in Glover Teixeira. So far, he's had success against certain guys, guys that just stand. He hasn't really beat the complete mixed martial artist that he's going to see tomorrow night in Teixeira. This is a big step up for him. Absolutely. Well, let's move on to the co-main event. Rashad, your teammate, Michael Johnson, a.k.a. The Menace, a.k.a. Blackie Owl, facing a teammate of uh, lightweight champ, Rafael Dos Anjos, Benil Dariush. You know, this is a tough fight for Michael because, you know, Benil brings such a great style, softball style, trained under uh, Kings MMA, and he has a lot of power in his hands as well, too. But Mike, Michael... Blackyow is very fast, in and out. He creates a lot of problems with a lot of different angles. This is going to be a good fight because I'm telling you right now, Michael is now looking to get in that top three with the win. Michael Johnson has improved so much since his time on The Ultimate Fighter. It's amazing what he did to Edson Barbosa in the very last fight. But Darius is a kid that's coming into his own, very young and training out of a great team in Kings MMA. You have to carry some of that confidence with two champions in your in your on your team. Absolutely. Well, to, uh, fights go down tomorrow, but the weigh-ins are going off right now. Let's go down to Tennessee with John Anik, who is standing by. Take it away, John. What is up, Nashville, Tennessee? Thank you all so much for coming out to the weigh-in. How about a hand for our Octagon girls, Chrissy Blair and Vanessa Hansen, the greatest matchmaker in the world right there, Joe Silva, our COO Lawrence Epstein, his son Joe is with us, and my man Dean bringing up the rear. All right, let's get it started now with the UFC Fight Pass prelims at UFCFightPass.com. First up, in the lightweight division, Anthony Christodoulo versus Scott Hot Sauce Holtzman. Holtzman is from Tennessee. He actually played baseball in junior college. That wasn't a fast enough sport, so he moved on to hockey. He's played a little bit in the minors in Knoxville. Has a degree from the University of Tennessee in criminal justice and a minor in business administration.
155 and a half for Scott Holtzman. And his opponent is Anthony Christodoulou. Tonight, don't miss Fox Sports Live as Jay and Dan bring you all the news and highlights from a full day of MLB action and the latest from NFL training camps. That's tonight at 11 Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1. Six for Anthony Christodoulou. All right, our next UFC fight pass prelim is in the bantamweight division. Marlon Chito Vera versus Roman El Galito Salazar. Interim featherweight champion Conor McGregor continues his takeover of the UFC as he coaches on the all-new season of The Ultimate Fighter against Uriah Faber, beginning September 9th, only on Fox Sports 1. for Roman Salazar. And his opponent, please welcome Marlon Vera. MLB on Fox Sports 1 returns tomorrow with a doubleheader full of playoff implications as the NL West leading Dodgers take on the wildcard leading Pirates. Then the NL Central leading Cardinals square off against the Brewers. Coverage begins tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. and a hook for Chito Vera. All right, moving on now to the light heavyweight division. Chris Dempsey versus Jonathan Johnny Bravo Wilson. First fighter to the scale, making his UFC debut, Jonathan Wilson. Jonathan Wilson finally makes his UFC debut after a long amateur career. Seven amateur fights, six wins by knockout. Now he's undefeated as a pro. He says that now he finally making his debut on a full training camp and believes this gives him the best opportunity to be successful. I guess we're gonna have to wait and see. Johnny Bravo. And his opponent, Chris Dempsey. Wednesday, don't miss UFC Tonight as the best team of analysts in the sport break down all of this weekend's action. UFC Tonight is Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Chris Dempsey.
And now we get to Welcome the back to the Fox Sports Desk in Los Angeles. Catch the four-pack of prelim fights tomorrow on Fox Sports 2, starting with a bantamweight bout between Frankie Sines and Sirwan Kakai. Curtis Stans, Kakai up first. Kai had a hard road to the UFC. He says there's a lot of ups and downs along the way, but he feels because of those ups and downs, he is more than ready for this opportunity. Sirwin had an impressive UFC debut, and he looks to go out tomorrow and have another potential fight of the night. Watch two of the sport's most ferocious light heavyweights collide as Glover Teixeira squares off against Ovin St. Preux on UFC Fight Night with coverage beginning at 10 p.m. Eastern only on Fox Sports 1. Dustin Ortiz versus Willie Whoopass Gates. This is the second time Willie Gates has taken a fight on short notice. He believes the only way Dustin Ortiz can compete with him is to make this a slow fight, wrestle him. But he doesn't anticipate this being a problem as his main training partner is an NCAA wrestling champion. for Willie Gates. And his
his opponent, Franklin, Tennessee's own number 11 in the world. Please welcome Dustin Ortiz. Dustin Ortiz has a motto, it's stay chop, and that means keep moving forward and also chopping wood. He actually uses that as a workout. He said in Tennessee, no one thought twice about it, but when he took an ax and a log to the park in Wisconsin where he trains now, people gave him some looks. He's got a barn filled with wood and he's ready for a big bonfire after this one. for Dustin Ortiz. Division, Chris Cabozzi versus Tom Kong Watson. The once dairy farmer from England, Tom Kong Watson, has made a move this camp and he moved to South Florida to my camp, the Black Zillions. He said the biggest difference was having all the coaches under one roof and on the same page. Watson feels he is on the new lease of his career and feels like the world is ready to see a new and improved Tom Watson. for Tom Watson. And his opponent making his 14th UFC appearance, Chris Camozzi. Chris Camozzi made friends with the chiropractors next to the gym and when they decided to sell their business, Chris and his wife made their dream of owning their own business come true. They purchased a fitness apparel store. He said it works out perfect. He can train in the morning and head next door to help out his wife in the afternoon. Wale Bamboche, say that five times. You think I've got an easy job? What a guy. Fights because he wants to open youth training centers like the Boys and Girls Club, just like the one he started training Taekwondo in at a very young age. He believes in a couple years he can open the first of these places and start living his real life dream of providing a place for kids to train. Uriah Hall is one of the most impressive strikers in his weight class. 
He's a second degree black belt in Tiger Shogun Karate. But before he got a start in Tiger Shogun Karate, he learned his technique by playing Tekken, the video game. He was so good, in fact, when he got to Shulman, they said, you know what, you did karate before. Carl was too embarrassed to admit that he learned by playing video games. Hey, who said you can't learn nothing by playing video games? desk we are ready to weigh in the fighters on the main cards which you can see on fox sports one saturday night first up a flyweight scrap between ray borg and john herrera the undefeated ufc freshman herrera is up next john herrera undefeated making his ufc debut said that when he got the call to fight in the ufc Initially, he panicked. He could not believe that Dana White was actually calling him, and Dana called him Gene. Even though he was making his UFC debut and got a call from Dana White, the first thing he did was correct him and say, no, my name is Gian, and yes, I would love to fight in the UFC, and I plan on staying undefeated. You know, DC, when you're trying to make a name for yourself, you want people to get it right. You want them to say it the right way, and he corrected and Dana White. That's very brave four. by Gian. Very young man. Ray Borg said he was the worst wrestler in junior high, and he was not kidding. His record was 2-25. and 25. Those only two wins came against girls. He said he stopped wrestling after junior high, moved on to mixed martial arts. That's been working out for him. He's looking for his third straight. Well, I'm sensing a... Uh... A, a temple here in the, in, in the weigh-ins here. Everybody seems like they're having to take off the clothes and make weight. They're cutting it very close. He's almost a pound over. He's about three quarters of a pound over. Sounds like he's saying he's almost a pound 126 over. And three quarters 126 and 3 quarters. 126, so he's got one hour. He has one hour from right now to cut the final three quarters of a pound. Uh, if not, 20%. 20% goes to his the opponent. And the, and the thing about this is, again, we've said it time and time again, he goes and he has to run now, and he has to work off this extra weight. No sauna inside of the arena, which is normally pretty cold because they're trying not to be hot in the summer of Tennessee. So he's got his work cut off for him. Let's hope he gets it done. Sarah McMahon versus Amanda the Lioness Nunez. Next Friday, the 2015-2016 Bundesliga season kicks off with Bayern Munich squaring off against Hamburger at 2 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 2 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Well, guys, Amanda Nunez, of course, from the world-famous American top team. Sorry, Rashad. Well, actually, she was actually training at Black Zillion for a while. Did she? She came there for probably about uh, two to three weeks and trained with us before she jumped over to American Top Why team. couldn't you keep her? Well, they had more women over there. She was, I mean, but I'll tell you what, she was training with the guys and she was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. And well, I was actually impressed. Really it, good polished striker. It's actually really good to see that you guys have actually allowed for this whole little beef <laughs> thing to settle. Uh, you know, it's good. You guys are showing maturity you know in what? that area. You know what, it's about the athletes at the end of the day, man. Yeah. Now, guys, we will have to get her to wear a wig, but I've always said if I need a stunt double, I'm calling a month. <laughs> That's a tough girl right there. Sarah McMahon. 
McMahon is a self-proclaimed adrenaline junkie. She has been skydiving four times, and she told me that after this fight, she's going to up the challenge by getting certified to skydive solo. Sarah McMahon's a girl that I've known for a really long time. As I've said time and time again, she used to come in and train at Oklahoma State with us in the room, wrestle the guys. And we all believed that Sarah was the lady that could challenge Ronda Rousey. She believes that the fight went too fast. She thinks she can work her way back. Immediately after Ronda's fought Misha's fight, she was saying, help me to get a rematch with one of these women. She looks very surprised. Sarah's Absolutely. made weight. Yeah, she's you know, an Olympic yes. silver medalist. 136 and a half for Sarah McMahon. Yeah, there's got to be some kind of discrepancy which the scale in which the fighters are checking then this one on stage. OK, she's so Sarah can actually, you know, make the weight if she's sure. able to, you know, obviously strip down. But where does Joe go? Do they do it in the back? Like, I, I don't yeah. think I've ever seen it happened on, on the women's Famously, side. Famously, Gina Carano. That's a different dynamic that we, yep. we haven't seen. Yeah, yet. we have never Long seen that. Long time ago, Gina Carano did, but uh, that was years ago. Well, yeah. Moving on now to the heavyweight division. Jared, the Big Show Rochelle versus Tim Johnson. This week, MLS Soccer Sunday, sponsored by Audi, returns with the New York Derby as the Red Bulls take on New York, uh, New York City FC at 7 Eastern right here on Fox Sports 1. You know, I just love this guy, Tim Johnson. You know, he's one of those guys who says, I just love just training in sport, and I'm enjoying learning every single bit. And he says, I know where to fight my fight. I'm not one of those fighters who get out there and try to fight a fight that is not my fight. I'm a wrestler. I stick to wrestling. If I get in trouble with my feet, I go to wrestling. Right at the limit. I was going to say. <laughs> right at the heavyweight limit. And his opponent, please welcome Jared Rochelle. Jared Rochelle loves country music, so therefore he loves fighting in Nashville. He said he made the most of this week by hitting up the Country Music Hall of Fame, and he and his team hit up the Tennessee Titans practice as well. Jared Rochelle has to be right at home in Tennessee. This guy's a country boy at heart. Easily one of the most successful heavyweights in Oklahoma State history. <laughs> it's a heavyweight, sir. It, it really doesn't matter as much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For Jared and I talked to Jared, and because of what Rashad said, Tim Johnson loves to wrestle when he gets in trouble. So Jared is very confident going into this fight, knowing that he can out-wrestle Tim Johnson and win this fight. Three-time D1 All-American. Probably one of the greatest heavyweights in Oklahoma State history. Easily. In the middleweight division, Derek Brunson versus Smiling Sam Alvey. Smiling Sam, I got an opportunity to watch him live in Brazil. And you know what impressed me about him was actually before the fight on weight cut day, we're all sitting around eating. He has his whole family there, his kids and everything, and they're all making all kinds of noise. And you just watch him just smiling the whole night through and just enjoying himself with the whole thing. And that's the same mentality he took into the fight. Through all the confusion, no matter what was going around him, he stayed calm and poised to get his W against my teammate Cesar. Well, and as you saw, his wife is there with him on stage as She's well. actually and his, his, his corner man. Yeah. And his or a corner woman, corner I should woman. say. There you go. In the world, Derek Brunson. Derek Brunson is a phenomenal athlete. Derek Brunson, since losing to Yoel Romero, who's number three in the world, has been on a tear. Won two fights in a row. We have to go back to the Romero fight and remember, 
Brunson scored many takedowns, was actually winning two rounds to zero when he got stopped. He believes that by going through Alvin, he moves towards the top 10 and starts to really establish himself as a contender. Six for Derek Brunson. You know, so Derek Brunson, since getting into the UFC, four and one, only lost to Romero. He gets this win. He gets another highly ranked guy uh, moving forward. And that's why I think he's better than his number 15 rank. You know, and that's a surprise to me that he's number 15, having fought a fight like he did against Romero. Yes. But also against Romero, it's hard not to feel small. <laughs> you know, against Mylon, Sam here, he's he's the bigger man. But Sam Alvey has a way well, of winning fights. When you don't think no, he can. Yes, exactly. He got that one hit of Michael, the Menace Johnson versus Benil Daryush. Benil Daryush is really starting to come into his groove. He's one of those guys that when you meet him and you talk to him, he's so quiet, he's so reserved, and he's so passive. But when he gets into the octagon, he comes out of his shell. Very well-rounded, unbelievable grappler. When he can get a fight to the ground, he's able to control you in positions that you don't expect him to be able to. Benil Daryush is 11-1. He's training out of Kings MMA, two champions over there. And even Rafael Dos Anjos says, this guy has a big future in this sport. That's coming from the champion who dominated Anthony Pettis in his last fight, saying that Darius is a guy that you better keep an eye on. They all believe that because of his style, Michael Johnson is the guy in the top five that they wanted to fight against. Yeah, I went down to Kings a couple weeks ago and saw Benil. And, uh, after he fights, a lot of people take a vacation the day after he's heading to Haiti to do humanitarian work. What a guy. Yeah, great guy. My man, my brother, Michael Blackyow Johnson. You know, one thing that impressed me so much about Michael is having a chance to watch him get ready for a fight. It's such a mental preparation. I've really never seen a fighter who does what he does. He sits there and he makes sure everything is done on a mental standpoint. I Probably right now he's listening to some positive affirmation. He's really into the mental and cerebral side of getting ready for a fight. All in his room, he has nothing but positive affirmations. All in the dressing room, all everything leading up to the fight is all about keeping him in the go. You say Blackie has a bit of a short fuse, though. He does. <laughs> you can't say too much about him without him flipping out on you. But I know how to get well, you, out of the skin. Well, and you I could probably use skin. that in a positive way in a fight. Yeah, I mean, his other nickname is Spark because he goes off so fast. <laughs> All right, now it's time to take a closer look at the two men on the marquee. They share the spotlight for tomorrow night's light heavyweight main event. Take a look. If someone would have told me a year ago I'd be headlining a, a fight in Nashville, Tennessee, I would have told them you're crazy. But, you know, everything happened for a reason, and, uh, you know, I was meant to be here. Ovin St. Prue is a real contender. Ovin's is finally getting the whole mixed martial arts game tuned in now. And we're seeing some spectacular results. He has knocked out Mauricio Shogun Hua with one punch. Shogun got and then knocked out Pat Cummins in an equally impressive fight after that. He's a guy to keep an eye on, because if he continues to improve at the rate we're seeing, you're looking at a guy who could easily be challenging for the title in a year or two. For Ovin St. Prue, this is an opportunity to fight a guy in Glover Teixeira that took the champ to five rounds, that has a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, that has nasty knockout power in his punches, that has vicious submissions. He's taking it so For Glover Teixeira, if he can beat Ovin St. Prue, puts himself right back in the mix. I'm focused, man. I want to get in the top of my game again. My whole life is this right now. This is a different Glover Teixeira. I feel like I got everything working, you know, for me. Glover got a lot of things working against him. With every fight, I'm getting better and better. I can knock out practically anybody you put in front of me. I'm hungry, man. I want this win more than ever. There's a champ inside me. There's a war inside me. I'm going to push and pressure these guys and knock him out. Strider to the scale, a volunteer for life, Ovin St. Cruz. 
Mount St. Prue in strike force, where he went six and one in strike force. He's six and one in the UFC. This is the time for Ovens to sink or swim. He's getting a chance to fight a guy that's fought for the championship, a guy that went five rounds with Jones. If Ovens can win this fight, he can prove to everyone that without a shadow of a doubt, he's a legitimate contender in the 205 pound division. This is one of those guys that we'll see as the sport continues to progress. A top level athlete that chooses to fight outside of everything else. Ovens is a special athlete and if he's showed up some of the holes in his game, he should be able to win this fight tomorrow night. Over a year and a half ago, Glover Teixeira was fighting John Jones for the championship belt. He did not win that fight. He struggled in, in since, but now he's trying to bounce back. Now he's trying to find that rhythm that got him that shot. And one thing when you're looking at Glover Teixeira, here's a guy who's been around in May for a while, challenging and training with the best in the sport and has a lot of experience. And going against a young guy like, uh, like um, OSP. Oh, OSP, I'm sorry, <laughs> See, I forgot his name. <laughs> Going against a gun guy like OSP, you know, he knows that OSP has a lot of tools, but at the same time, when you're a seasoned veteran like Glover Teixeira, it doesn't take much to get the W. And he didn't make excuses, DC, but the other day he did see a terrible weight cut for them. Yes, he did. And he's been battling injuries, too. Yeah, he said he had way too much weight that I mean, he looked great in July when we saw him at the Fan Expo uh, for UFC 189. He looked phenomenal. He looked to be in phenomenal shape, said it's been a great weight cut, and he believes that this is the fight that puts him right back in the contention. Love that the division is now so fresh now that Jones is out of the picture. Official, folks. Thank you all so much for coming out to the official way, and we will see you right back here. For the fights tomorrow. Coming up next, former title challenger Glover Teixeira is back in a main event. Can he halt Ovin St. Pru in his tracks? We will discuss that next. Stay with us. To the Fox Sports 1 UFC Fight Night weigh-in show. I'm Karen Bryant. Glover Teixeira entered the UFC's octagon riding a 15-fight win.